To offset those severe operational cash outflows as well as investing in the club's infrastructure, Bristol City have needed a total cash injection of a million over the last 10 years. Yeah, and you've got to sort of uh, take the punch on the nose, if you like, and uh, and have that siege mentality as a team and as a club now, because I, I truly believe that we can go on a really good run. That's Welcome to Numbers Behind the Net. Every week, we jump back on the football money trail, diving deep into a club's finances to uncover the state of play off the pitch. Today, we journey to the southwest to unravel the financial story of Bristol City. Flashback to 2014, and the Robins were stationed in the third tier of English football. However, that would change a year later, with Bristol City winning the title, and with it, a ticket back to the championship. The trophy goes up! Steady progress was made in subsequent seasons, as well as a run to the League Cup semi-finals. But Covid saw a drop in results, with the Robins lately entrenched in the bottom half of the table. On the sidelines, Ashton Gate has seen a steady lineup of six different managers over the decade. O'Driscoll, Cotterill, Pemberton, Johnson, Holden, Pearson. Now let's turn our attention off the pitch. What unfolded behind the scenes? Bristol City's revenue climbed steadily as they climbed the championship ranks. Despite COVID hurdles, their best year in 2023 reached 37 million. Let's uncover the driving forces behind this growth. Time for a deep dive into revenue streams. Starting with matchday revenues, Bristol City's best return was 7 million in 2018, a result of both on-field progress and stadium development. We'll delve into that soon. 2023's revenue was the highest matchday revenue since that peak. But what about the underlying attendance figures? Bristol City's ascent in the championship is reflected in the steady growth from under 12,000 in 2014 to nearly 22,000 in 2020, with 2023 showing signs of a return to pre-pandemic levels. Next up, let's dive into TV and league revenues. Promotion to the second tier sparked a clear shift, followed by steady growth with revenues now averaging 9 million. Commercial revenues are also a positive story for the Robins, increasing from under 2 million in 2014 to nearly 20 million in 2023, a near 10-fold increase. Examining league position, we notice a loose correlation with revenue in the championship and a significant gap between the second and third tiers. On average, Bristol City have made 25 million in the championship, nearly quadruple that in League One. Lots of supporters have had quite a few hard times here and I'm absolutely delighted now that they've got the good times. Now let's dive into profits. Unfortunately, Bristol City's financial scoreboard isn't looking too bright. Except for a glimmer of hope in 2019, they've been in the red every season. The link between operating profit and league position holds, but Bristol City have suffered larger losses on average in the championship compared to League One. What's causing this? We'll be back to profit in just a sec, but if you're enjoying what we do here at Numbers Behind the Net, you'd be helping us out massively if you click that subscribe button and you'll stay up to date with all our latest videos. Cheers for all your support, and now back to the PL. Let's tackle this with our PL walkthrough. Let's set the timer, dry out the revenue, and dive into staff costs. Wages have followed a similar trajectory to revenue, often exceeding it. In 2023, for the first time in six years, staff costs have dipped below 100%. However, 2021 paints a different picture, with COVID meaning wage bills doubled revenue. Let's evaluate how these wage costs translated into points on the pitch for Bristol City. In League One, each point costs 150,000 in staff costs. After promotion to the championship, that price jumps to around 500K. Even with staff costs alone, the challenge of sustainability in the championship becomes evident. Next up, operating costs. These continue to rise steadily, possibly due to ongoing operational expenses related to the stadium development, although specifics are limited. Looking at EBITDA, the Robins have been consistently in the red each season. Next up, stadium facilities. Expenses related to these have increased notably, particularly since 2017 due to investments in Ashton Gate and other facilities. Finally, let's see if there's any reprieve from our final item, transfer fees. Despite competing in a higher league since 2016, Bristol City have achieved significant profits from player sales, particularly in 2017, 19 and 20, thanks to several lucrative sales. Khadija, Cordova Reed, Webster, Kelly, Brownhill. It's evident that player sales have helped offset the club's operational losses, although not enough to generate a profit in nine out of the 10 years. On average, the margin tells a clear story. Bristol City have faced an average 60% loss in the championship, contrasting with a staggering 140% plunge in League One. Yeah, very, yeah. Not, 
not really acceptable for us. Let's see if cash aligns with the profit picture we've just seen. As usual, we're scrutinizing the combination of cash from operations and transfer fees. Cash from operations influenced by EBITDA line items is certainly aligned. Cash has flown out the door every single season. Across the decade, 132 million has been spent by the club. Shifting our attention back to transfers, do those big sales offset that spending? We see more cash go out the door until 2019 when the script flips. Since then, the Robins have made transfer cash every season. Overall, those later years mean 23 million has been brought into Ashton Gate. However, those won't be enough to offset those operational cash flows. Over the 10 years, 109 million has exited Ashton Gate. On top of that, we need to factor in the club's investment into the stadium and other facilities. Significant spending occurred from 2015 to 17 as Bristol City developed the stadium. Another notable investment was made in 2021 with the unveiling of the Robins High Performance Centre, benefiting both the men's and women's teams. Across the decade, 70 million has been invested into the club's infrastructure. So how much funding has been required? To offset those severe operational cash outflows as well as investing in the club's infrastructure, Bristol City have needed a total cash injection of 189 million over the last 10 years. Yeah, we've got to sort of uh, take the punch on the nose, if you like, and, uh, and have that siege mentality as a team and as a club now, because I, I truly believe that we can go on a really good run. Huh? This has been made up of both equity and loan debt. Whilst the majority has been funded as owner equity, Bristol City still carry a significant amount of debt. 94 million to be precise at the end of 2023. Will Bristol City's investments allow them to survive and thrive in the championship? Or will debt levels continue to rise? Only time will tell. Until next time.